reasons to be cheerful. One, two, three. The Canon R5 has more to offer than many YouTubers would have you believe. Let's look into that. Reasons to be cheerful, part one. Ibis. A first for Canon, they've leapt to the front of the field with eight stops of stabilisation. Now the camera is getting into the hands of everyday photographers, we are seeing those comments by Canon ambassadors were actually correct, and they were not overstating it. Incredible smoothness, described as better than Sony, rivaling Fuji. What to stumble to the end of this clip, and that's with Sony's new active mode switched on. Rolling shutter is also significantly better than Sony. Dan Watson shows here the R5 on top has a better control of the rolling shutter than the A7S III. The Sony has improved but Canon has controlled it better. Reasons to be cheerful, part 2. Autofocus. Dual Pixel 2 is such an improvement with 100% sensor coverage even long-time Sony fans like Tony Northrup and Philip Bloom have said they are blown away by how good it is. Philip in particular started a campaign to get Sony to catch up with Canon and implement Animal Eye Detect for filming. He's a cat lover, after all. Several videos and social media show what it's capable of. Tracking birds in flight, all you have to do is keep them in the frame. The camera does the rest. No more waiting for the bird to enter a pre-focused area or trying to hold a focus square on a flying bird. Here Tony has slowed the footage by four times of a kingfisher in flight, try following that by hand. Finding birds of dense foliage before you can spot them yourself, the eye autofocus finds the eye even through leaves. Then just to show off, it can also focus on the insect eyes. Incredible. Reasons to be cheerful, part 3. Dynamic range. DP Reviews has published work by a long-time trusted contributor, Bill, from Photon to Photon's website. His detailed analysis reveals two incredible findings. Canon now has its first dual gain sensor and it outperforms Nikon and also Sony by a narrow but significant margin. In the table, shown here, Canon R5 is in blue, Nikon Z7 is in black, and Sony 7R4 is in green. The R5 better or equals the Sony at all data points up to ISO 12800. The dual gain can be seen cutting in around 400 to 800 ISO. This is a major achievement by Canon in an area where they were historically weak. There is no longer a dynamic range penalty due to choosing a Canon sensor. So there you have it. Three areas of major success and advancement from Canon and a bright future for Canon photographers. In other news, we need to reconsider this overheating term. The camera actually do overheat. Users are reporting the camera remains cool to touch even after shutdown. What Canon do is shut down to prevent overheating. This may seem pedantic, but it's actually a crucial point. It may be this is an area where a firmware fix can be easily introduced, perhaps tweak the upper limit. After all, that's what Sony do. Canon prove with the EOS R that they are willing and able to provide meaningful updates to the camera. Users saw improvements to AF and silent shooting in the months after the release of the EOS R. So this means we can expect the R5 and the R6 to be improved further in the months and years to come. Canon promised to change their ways in this area, and they certainly kept our promise. Also, it's unlikely that shipping delays are a deliberate act or a response to the market by Canon. They've warned since the 10th of July that they would not be able to meet the initial surge in demand for the R5. This means many pre-orders remain unfulfilled, myself included. Thanks for watching to the end. Hopefully you've noticed an improvement in production techniques. 
I'm taking in a lot of new processes and it'll take time to improve, but I hope you'll stay with me.